Welcome back to another informative video brought to you by Doomsday Diesel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to modify your OM617 intake manifold to accept an aftermarket turbo, such as one of the whole set options that I offer for this engine. This is the DIY option for those of you that would rather cut and weld your own intake manifold. So if you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and try welding on some cast aluminum, follow along and I'll show you just how painless this can be. Currently, I'm offering these flat laser cut plates that will cap off the factory inlet and the EGR port. I'm also trying to come up with a way to produce this aluminum tube that's your new inlet with a barbed flange and a nice cope to fit around the round intake. However, I'm still trying to figure out the manufacturing of this part, so this part will change over time. These are ready to go right now though. So what we end up doing is we cut this kind of lip off the factory inlet. We cut the EGR off. You end up with something that looks kind of like this. And this one has a cap on it, but it'll look something like that. You can use these as your gauges and simply cut until you have proper welding surface for both of these pieces to fit. To put our hole into the tube so that we can weld our new inlet on, we're gonna to need to use a hole saw. So here I have my cordless drill. I've got my handle on it, which is really important because hole saws will bite in and grab and it could break your wrist if you don't have a proper handle extension on there. So make sure you have that. Now this is a two and a half and the proper way to do this is have one of these setups where there's two pins that lock into the bottom here. And I have this figured out exactly where we wanna drill. So there's some embossments on the side of here, Mercedes Benz, above the E of Benz is where you want to drill your pilot hole. So it's best to clamp this intake into a vise to drill the hole and cut all the pieces off. So keep in mind when you're clamping this in your vise, it's hollow and it's cast. So you only want to grip it firm enough that it doesn't move when you're drilling or cutting on it. If you squeeze it too tight in the vise, you'll simply shatter it. So the proper way to drill our hole in here is to first take just the pilot bit and make our pilot hole. Again, we're going right above the E of bends. Now you see when I broke through, the drill fell in abruptly. And that's why you only wanna have the pilot bit for the pilot hole. If you had the hole saw attachment on and you sank in, it would actually grip the teeth into the cast and more likely than not, it would shatter your pilot bit. Make sure you're wearing proper safety glasses while doing this too, because aluminum's flying everywhere. So next we will install our two and a half inch hole saw. And these are available at all your local hardware stores. So when we drill this, the teeth actually need to be touching the aluminum before we pull the trigger. Now you can see just how filthy this one was on the inside. Now you certainly want to have this as clean as possible both inside and out before you attempt to weld on it. I'll have to clean this out more before I can weld on it. Otherwise, number one, it'll sit there and smoke really bad the whole time I'm welding. And number two, it could possibly start on fire while I'm welding. But that's a nice clean way to get your hole in your inlet. And then once you have your cope tube, it lines up perfectly. And you don't want to have just a straight cut, otherwise you'd have a, you know, an edge sticking, protruding past on the inside that would block airflow. So we'll get this deburred, we'll deburr this, and then those parts will essentially be ready to weld. So then we'll move on to removing the factory inlet and the EGR. The first thing I like to do is take the EGR off. I actually like to come in here, cut this off, and then I go back in and I smooth out this webbing here. Now one trick for both of these pieces is start with a new cutoff wheel so that you can get as deep into this as possible. I like to use at least a four and a half inch. If you have to, you can come back with a sawzall blade to finish that cut so that you can get, get a nice straight cut so that everything 
lands on the same plane when you're welding those caps on. Sometimes it's really hard with the guard and everything else on the angle grinder, um, depending on your setup, to be able to cut all the way through this. So as you can see that cut right through like butter, I like to get one of these finer tooth blades for the sawzall. That way it doesn't grip and bite in and shake everything. If you try one of these coarser teeth um, blades, it'll probably vibrate the intake manifold right out of your vise. So at this point that's just roughly done. Again, this isn't clean so I'm going to have to go in and properly clean this out before I can proceed or I'm just going to smear oil into the pores of the aluminum that I'm trying to weld. Now I'm gonna cut the factory inlet off. And so you can actually see this flat face inside here. And that's where I wanna cut up against. So I wanna bring my blade in so the blade is hovering right above that face. Do that all the way around. And as you can see, um, with the cutoff wheel, it's easy enough to get around out here. It's almost impossible to get up inside here. So I take the sawzall and transfer that line across and I come out with a nice flat face. So now I'm gonna take this to the parts washer, get this cleaned out a lot better. Then I'll come back here and show you how I prep it before I actually weld it. Okay, so we've got this cleaned up here a little bit. So at this point, we're gonna take our laser cut pieces Hold them up over here and make sure everything lines up good. I'm going to take just a, the same cutoff wheel that we used to cut. We're going to smooth this out. For the EGR cap, you're going to have to lay that over top here and just work your way down on this surface until that fits nice. Or you can actually use a belt sander and trim this piece up to fit too if you'd like. If you cut right underneath the bottom surface of the, the threaded boss where the two bolts hold the EGR on, just stay right up against that. That should be a nice fit. And then lastly, I'm going to take the cutoff wheel to this cast surface, and I'm going to remove that very top layer. If you try welding to this cast surface, your weld's going to bubble up. You're going to get a lot of porosity. I found that simply taking a cutoff wheel and removing this cast top surface until it's smooth and shiny like this is enough to give you a decent weld on this cast aluminum intake manifold. This isn't the case with every type of cast aluminum, but every type of cast has different alloying elements in it. This happens to work just fine by removing that top surface. So here is our prepped product. Now, it's safest just to go ahead and go beyond your welding surface. Even if you don't think you're gonna be welding on something, but you think there's a chance that you could butt up to it, especially on your EGR, I like to just clean everything I can up on here because a lot of times you'll end up overlapping out onto this area. And as soon as you get into this dirty cast uh, material, this top surface here, it'll suck it into your weld, you'll get porosity, 
and then you'll have to grind your whole weld off. So now we've got this cap that's going to fit nicely on there, right like that. And then this guy fits on here, right like so. I'm going to get my work area cleaned up here because it's now an absolute mess. So we've got everything prepped here, ready to be welded. I've taken my wire brush here, stainless steel wire brush, clean up around the weld area on every single part. It doesn't appear to be as big of a necessity on the cast since you ground this with the angle grinder. Now, one tip that I, you definitely want to do is for your filler rod, take a piece, a piece of scotch bright and scuff up the entire filler rod and then wipe everything down with acetone. Now the reason we're doing this is to remove that layer of oxidation. The scotch bright takes it off the filler rod because obviously this is going to have some on it too. And this is a piece a lot of people overlook. Now, the filler rod you want to use for cast aluminum in this case is 4047. And it's kind of hard to come by. Um, I had to buy an entire case of it, but I use it all the time. It's really hard to come by it in a sample size or a small size carton. I had to buy one of the big boxes of it. The other part I want to point out is on this polished tube, a lot of times when you have a finished part like this, it's coated in some type of clear coat, whether it's paint or anodizing or something that's not going to respond favorably to welding. In this case, these tubes I'm getting from Summit Racing weld beautifully. All you got to do is wire brush it and they are not coated it welds really, really nicely, and it's really affordable stuff. So we've got this ready to go here. You can see that coat just fits beautifully in there. So I'm gonna get all these tacked up. We'll get them welded on. I like to do the big round cap first, and then I come back and do this small cap. And the reason for that is if I add the bigger piece first, that's just more heat sink because when you weld cast, the biggest thing is you want to keep as much heat out of the cast as possible. Or in other words, you want minimum heat input in the cast. So we don't want our uh, welder putting a lot of cleaning action on the cast because it's going to continue to draw impurities out, which is going to increase the likelihood for porosity, which leads to leaks and cracks. So you want to focus your heat on the laser cut parts and the tubing. Minimize how much heat you're putting into the cast. This filler has a lot of wetting agents in it, so it wets out that puddle. It flows really easily. It's not as strong as like a 4043, but it wets out really nice. It has a lower melting point, so you don't have to run as high of amperage to get this to wet out. And that's the key for welding this cast. You want to weld at the absolute lowest amperage you can get away with. And as soon as you get that dab of filler in there, you want to be moving on. You want to move quick and at low heat. I like to work around. I'll actually do a back stepping method where let's say I start here and I weld over here and then I'll actually come back and I'll weld up to that. Then I'll come back and I'll weld up to my second weld and so on and so forth. I'll also let this cool. You don't want to work to the point this thing is just scalding hot. You want to let it cool off because again, we're trying to keep minimal heat going into this cast material just to minimize the chance for porosity. All right, so here you can see we've finished welding. We've gotten this all the way around. I did it in multiple steps, let it cool down. Over here, same thing, multiple passes. And just as soon as you think you've cleaned enough material off so that you're not sucking in that dirty cast surface, um, well, think again. There was one spot on here. I pulled a little contamination in right here. It's actually from the inside. You will see a million little holes pop up. And don't freak out, but don't try to sit there and zap them and melt it all to get it to go away because that's just going to make it worse. You're going to have even more holes. You have to let it cool off, come back, get an arc going, get some nice clean filler material to work with, and try to work that uh, area with the porosity towards your clean base metal. And when you let off the arc and you, you terminate that arc, terminate it over here 
on a clean base metal and that'll help minimize the risk for porosity once you once you finish that weld. And now you can see why it's important to clean all the way around for your EGR because there's very minimal surface area for your weld. Your arc likes to spill over onto this edge around the side. That's it in a nutshell. Good luck to you if you're going to try tackling this yourself. It is not hard as long as you do the proper amount of prep work. The welding is fairly painless, but if you skip any of the steps that I've spelled out for you, you will have problems welding on this cast. It, everything has to be done to a T. It's got to be clean and it's got to be prepped and then it welds just fine. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more in-depth welding how-tos, I have a new series coming out eventually. It's called Welding with Joe and I'll be giving some real technical scientific welding tips. So watch for that to be coming out later. Thanks. We'll see you in our next one.